First of all, I'd like to thank all the witnesses for their testimony. Uh, obviously, we hear your frustration and your anxiety about uh, your uh, industry. I'm on the transport committee as well. And so we have been studying uh, the whole uh, aspect of the impact of COVID-19 on your industry. And you've alluded to the fact that you had some issues uh, even previously to the pandemic. <clears throat> Monsieur Chartrand, I would like to um, ask you, when you came to Transport Committee back in January, your association did, um, there was a question about how the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy had been used to maintain employment. Um, and I believe there was some question uh, as to whether all employers were taking full advantage of that program. Could you elaborate? Uh, they are not. I... You know, I have to be honest, they're, they're, a lot of the small and medium businesses are using it. Uh, some of the major ones, like Air Canada, is not, uh, or they're partially using it. Uh, there, there hasn't been, you know, obligations put on the employers to, to use it and to keep people employed and work. And I believe that's what the queues was for initially. It was to make sure that we kept people employed at work and all that. Uh, the why, uh, you know, Knowing that it will take a long time to recover in that industry, as Madame Benoit has said, uh, many of these employers, such as Air Canada, have decided that since there were people that were going to be on furlough for a year to two years, they simply didn't want to pay the difference. You know, they were getting a wage subsidy for 75%. They didn't want to pay the additional 25% or the benefits and things like that that are attached with a collective bargaining agreement. So, no, I mean... It is extremely important that we continue the program, not to lose our talents, make sure that people stay in, in work in the small and medium enterprises, and, and that there's like maybe a, 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 a merge of two different programs, but, but the wage subsidy is important. It has helped. I can't say that it has. I think it should be maintained, but there, there needs to be more spec uh, sector-specific aid to the employers to make sure that they can you know, support their, their, their people at work, uh, have new projects for people to work on and all that, like Suzanne was saying, for green energy. And uh, you know, if, if we don't support the employers and all that, we're going to lose those talents and then employers won't be interested in investing here in Canada. Yes, um, certainly during the Transport Committee, we've learned that uh, the federal government has supported the industry writ large to some tune of $2 billion when it comes to queues, when it comes to support for airports, regional routes, and so on. Um, so I'm asking you, uh, Monsieur Chartrand, you've talked about uh, a national labor strategy, even potentially the opportunity for repatriation of skilled employees and so on. Have you costed? out what such a, a labor strategy would look like. You've talked about apprenticeships, et cetera, et cetera. Any dollar figures that you've come up with? No, I have. The, I don't have that information. I didn't cost it out there, but uh, I'm sorry about that. I don't have the information. Would anyone in your association have done such a, uh, an analysis? Because it could be very useful for us. Uh, I, will, I will look into that and I'll get back to you. If we could have it sent by uh, some opportunity, that would be great. Absolutely. Now, um, Madame Benoit, um, you've made it clear that uh, the super cluster strategy of our government has not uh, somehow benefited the aerospace industry. Uh, uh, could you sort of elaborate what you would see <clears throat> as improvements to that strategy? You're on mute. Vous êtes en sortine, Madame Benoît. Sorry about that. So the strategy itself is extremely valuable for research, more fundamental research. We have TRLs one, two, and three. So great investment in research, but the research isn't applied within sectors. So what we had proposed to the government given our experience in aerospace, was to have a super cluster in innovation, but with technological development that would be closer to commercialization, that would create jobs, that would include students who would undertake internships, and there would be a research center. So the whole ecosystem would be involved. But we were told, you know, you in aerospace, you're well organized, 
everything works well in your ecosystem, you don't need a supercluster. That is essentially the reply that we got.